still trying to watch us by Facebook, you're welcome to. Amen. 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 We thank God for you. Amen. 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 You're missing the time and the Lord if you are not able to join us. Amen. Amen. We just thank God for those of, those of you who are here um, as we worship God together. Amen. Amen. In this place. You know, there is an ongoing debate, and we'll talk about that later on, next, who knows, one of these days. There's an ongoing debate about, you know, do you worship in corporate or do you just sit at home and watch via Facebook and all that good stuff? I, I, got, I, got, a, I got a couple of messages for that at some point in Deacon Hall. We won't get into today, but just know that you always miss when you're not able to uh, assemble yourselves together. Amen. Amen. Um, but we thank God for those of you who are here. We thank God for those of you who've joined us. Um, as well via Facebook. Amen. Um, we thank God for the visitors who are here on the day as well. We pray God's blessing upon you. Pray that something will be said here, done here, that will help you in your journey as well. And so those of you who are members, you know who the visitors are. Make sure you uh, give them a handshake or a hug. Amen. Before they leave and let them know that they are welcome here at Zoe. Amen. 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 The other thing real quickly is, y'all, uh, I think I scared Minister Jackson. You know, this morning, because y'all know he, now, that's one of the shortest prayers he ever prayed. I think what it is, he just, he just getting back, he just, just kind of getting back, you know, and just, so. <laughs> we thank God for Minister Jackson, who's here, amen. Amen, he's here with us from Arizona for uh, the next few months. Amen, we're always grateful, amen, for, just for his spirit. Amen. And, uh, and just for what he gives to this ministry as well. Amen. The other thing, very quickly, and I'm going to get into my message. Um, I won't be before you long. Um, it is getting kind of warm. <laughs> I, think we, I think we're ready to go back outside. Amen. Yeah, I think we're ready to go back outside. Amen. So we already got our stuff set back there, so it's, it, it, it's any given day. So y'all might come one Sunday. Y'all may be outside. You may see us outside. Amen. One thing I do say that the pandemic did deliver to us is the fact that we need to be outside. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be outside as much as possible again this year, like we were last year. Amen. But it is a little warm in here. I'm going to take my jacket off in a minute. Boy. But invite, let me invite your attention to the book of Ephesians, the, the second chapter. And I want to continue our discussion from last week from Ephesians. Um, you don't have to stand because we read, we read the scripture until you're hearing on last week. I really want to just pick up from, uh, from there, uh, you know, as we were talking about um, the, the first point from the message. But let's go into I'm going to read it. No, don't stand. I just want to read based on where I, where I stopped from, where I want to pick up from on last week. And, um, and for those of you who are joining us for the first time, we are, we're talking about the advantage of the ascension. As a matter of fact, last week I, I even put another A in there. I, I talked about the awesome advantage of the ascension. Uh, the ascension being Christ being able to go back to heaven when he says that, you know, um, it is to your advantage that I go away so that I can send the Holy Spirit in John 16. And so Christ was saying it was, it was really to our advantage not, that, not that, that he just simply died for us. Uh -huh. Not just that he simply just resurrected for us. Yeah. But that also that he had to go away. Uh -huh. uh, and, and so therefore going away 
put us in a whole other position of authority that we were not in before he did go away. Amen. And so uh, we talk about the advantage of the ascension, uh, and I tried to give you just an introduction on last week in the, be in the beginning of the first point. We were talking about that advantage simply being, you know, as, you know, being able to deal with the, um, and experience the person, the power, the presence, and the, and the protection of the Holy Spirit in your and my life as believers. But he had to go away for us to be able to do that. You know, and he had to go away for us to be able to be helped, all of us at one time, wherever we were, at different days, different times, different places, all but, be, but him being able to help us in all of who he was, wherever every, where everybody else is, at the same time. Now, I'm going to tell you this one more time. Don't try to figure that one out because you'll go crazy trying to figure that out. Because you can't figure out how is it that God can take care of me on the south side, take care of you on the north side and take care of you on the east side, and take care of you on the west side, at the same time, with the same strength. Now, if you try to figure that one out, I, I'm, I promise you, you're going to go crazy trying to figure it out, because only an infinite God can do such a thing, amen? But it was because, and is because, of the ascension. Because when Christ was here, Christ literally had to go, he had to be dispatched over to the south side to help me out. Yeah. Amen, Brother Merle. And then he had to be dispatched over to the north side to help out Sister Rachel. Yeah. Then he had to be dispatched over to the west side to help out whoever y'all on the west side. Yeah. <laughs> then he had to be dispatched back here by the lake to help out some of y'all like Minister Monique who by the lake, yeah. by the east side. But with, with him being gone, he tells the Holy Spirit, just take, just take care of it. Yeah. Deal with it. That's the advantage that we have as believers. Yes. Amen? Amen? So that's what I've been trying to share with over the last few sessions, uh, and i got a few more sessions to go. Uh, but let's, let's get down into it, because last week I, was, I gave the introduction about how you deal with defeat in the ascension, and then I just started talking about the various points Dealing with this whole concept of being able to uh, have that awesome advantage in the ascension. And we, we started going into verse, I mean, into point one from verses, um, from verse four and five and eight and nine, when verse four and five was saying, you know, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when he, uh, even when we were dead, tra dead in trespasses and sin, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Then I dropped down to verse eight. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And we were talking about that the advantage of the ascension is, is in the ascension we must, one, attain and acquire Yahweh's present. In other words, the, the present of Yahweh is the gift of grace. And because the present and gift is the same thing. So we, we were able to attain and acquire the gift of grace because we were not in nowhere near uh, position to be able to receive God's grace and get God's grace. He had to gift his grace yeah. to you and I. Yeah. Amen? And because he had to gift his grace to you and I, in the gifting of his grace to you and I, he gifted us Jesus Christ. Amen. In his grace. And so, and, I, and, I, and we were talking a bit about that because I, 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 if we, don't, we need to understand that as believers, I'm looking at Romans 5 here, uh, don't, well, mm, let's jump over Romans 5 real quickly. Yeah, I'm going to take this jacket off because it's a little warm up here. <coughs> and so in Romans 5, verse 14, can you get this for Papa? Thank you. And, and I want to explain this whole gift of the gift that I talked about last week because the gift of grace also gave us the gift of Jesus. And we needed the gift because we couldn't do it without the gift based off of who God is. And so in Romans 5, I think Paul lays it out so plainly. In Romans 5, I'm going to read from the New King James Version first. And then I'm going to read from the New Living Translation so you can get a, a better understanding. So in Romans 5 um, it says, verse, verse 14 says, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. So when Adam was born, when Adam was created, when Adam sinned, from Adam's sin, 
up to Moses, up until then, death reigned from Adam to Moses. He says, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam. But then in verse 15 he says, but the free gift is not like the offense, for if, the one, if by one man's may, uh, many offenses many die, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of, of the one man, Jesus Christ. See there, the gift of the gift. The gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to many. We all get that free gift if we choose it. The, and then verse 16, and the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from one, uh, from, from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in our being justified. In other words, our being declared righteous. For if by one man's offense death reigned over the one, much more those who receive, listen to this, abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. And I can go on and keep talking about the gift of grace, the free gift, you know, and how grace abounds and how grace much more abound. But I want you to understand the point here is that when you talk about the advantage of the ascension, or the awesome advantage of the ascension, that is that we must attain and acquire Yahweh's presence, Yahweh's gift, this gift of grace, because when we get the gift of grace, the gift of grace in our life, then allow us to operate under Yahweh's control. Because the gift gave us the gift called Jesus Christ. And then remember I told you that you, you have to understand that understanding the way that you get that is by no, by no mere works of your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to work for this. Yeah. You don't have to work for this. You, you get it what we call sola fide. In other words, you get it by faith alone. Yeah. And because of faith alone, then you have sola gratia, which means by grace alone. Yeah. So faith alone gives you grace alone. Yeah. Don't miss that right there. Because you need grace alone to be able to achieve what we call sola deo gloria. In other words, the ultimate glory of God. Yeah. So by faith, yeah. through grace, I'm sorry, through faith, by grace, you now can give God glory. Yeah. You can't walk into the glory of God if you, if you have not walked in, amen, by the gift of grace. Yeah. Because of faith. Because of who Jesus is. So why am I saying all that? Because I need you to understand that nobody is better than anyone else. Because everything that we have, we have because of the grace of God in our life. I am no better than anybody else because I preach a message on Sunday morning. I am no better than any man or woman in the street because it's only because of grace. It's only because of the gift of grace and my, uh, and my receiving the gift of grace in my life. But we must attain and acquire Yahweh's presence, his gift. Because if we don't do that, then we can't walk with him. We can't hear from him. I know I said this a few, a few weeks ago, and I, and, I, and I probably got a little, people got a little upset about it, but I'm going to say it one more time. That is this, that... In today's society, we get it twisted because we think that we can do what we want to say, what we want to go, we want to go and reject God and rebel against God. All we want to do. But then when we call on him, yep. he better answer us. Yep. That's not how it works. Because the Bible says that the righteous run to the name of God and are made safe. Who is righteous? Those of us who've been declared righteous. By faith, because of the grace, and because of the gift of the grace called Jesus Christ. Y'all tracking with me? And so I was trying to make it a little bit more plain on last week about how we attain and acquire Yahweh's presence. He's, he's, wrapped, he's gift wrapped it for you and I. And all we have to do is receive it. Let me show you how good God is. See, don't, you know how, how when you, when you, you know, get your gifts on Christmas and you have to go through the task of unwrapping it and, you know, and tan and all that? Guess what he did, Deacon Greg? He, 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 we ain't even got to go through the motion of unwrapping anything. Amen. He said, because here he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't got to do nothing. We don't have to exert any kind of energy yeah. except for simply 
accept him entire life as Lord and Savior. Because of who, because of who God is. But that's the gift. That's the gift. And so I wanted to be make I wanted to make sure that we were we were tracking on that first point because I got a few more points I got to get to um, before I'm finished with this message probably next week. So let's go down to you know verse verse five and six of chapter two of the book of Ephesians. Okay, so in chapter two verse five and six, once again I want you to see something here. Verse five says, "Even when we were dead in trespasses." made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let's stop. So the second point is this, that in order for us to take advantage of this, uh, this awesome advantage of the ascension, um, here what we must do. We must, listen to me now, we must acclimate and adapt to your position. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to explain it to you. We must acclimate and adapt to your position. Okay. I mean, I, I guess they didn't, they didn't get that. Didn't jack. So let me see if I can explain a little bit more. Because see, before you got saved, you were in a different position. You were unsaved. You were a sinner. As a matter of fact, if I go, don't go there, but if I go to the book of Colossians, the first chapter, the 13th verse, it says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his son. So he took us from one position and brought us to another position. So he took us from being a sinner, uh-huh. Deacon Hall, yeah. to becoming a saint. Yeah. Now, let me, see, let me see if I can help you understand this real quickly. Because, see, a sinner is one who is in constant rebellion against God, who has rejected the Holy Spirit. That's who a sinner is. Yeah. A saint is one who has accepted Christ in their life, in their heart, and they have accepted Christ, and they're living for Christ. But now, as a saint, don't mean that you don't sin. It simply means that your heart's desire is to love God. Your heart's desire is to please God. Your heart's desire is to glorify God. Doesn't mean that you don't sin. And so a sinner says you have been, you, you are wrapped up and you are caught up in sin. And sin has got you. But to be a saint says that you are no longer wrapped up and caught up in sin, but that you have sin and instead of sin having you. And you now can control sin instead of sin controlling you. You have a choice to step away from sin as opposed to being caught up in sin. It, is, it becomes your choice. You are in a different position now. Don't you realize... That when, when Paul, if you go to Paul's uh, letters and he, and, he talk, and he talks to the churches, he'll say, he'll say to the saints of, yeah. or to the saints of, yeah. to the saints of. That term is what we call hagias. It means holy. It means holy ones. It means ones who are set apart. Yeah. And so therefore, yes, I am a saint set apart and I still got to deal with my sin, yeah. but I, I got help now dealing with my sin. Don't miss that right there. Because my help in dealing with my sin is from the cross of Christ. Because his blood now covers my sin. And so therefore, when I have to give an account, Sister Kim, I give an account not for my sin. I give an account for my work that was done in this body according to what God had called me to. When I give an account, I don't have to sit at the great white throne judgment and then eventually go into a judgment, uh, a, a, an eternity of hell. I sit at the cross, at the, uh, at the, um, at the, at the foot. Thank you, thank you. At the foot of Jesus, and I get judged by Jesus by the works and still make it to glory. In other words, you are you are in a different position now. So you must be able to acclimate and adapt to your position. You are no longer a sinner. 
You are a saint who still grapples with sin. Oh, they still ain't got it yet, didn't Let me see if I go a little bit further with that. So the term acclimate, to acclimate means to become, and listen to me, to become accustomed to a new climate or a new condition. Y'all missed it. Y'all sleep. Y'all wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. See, to acclimate means to become accustomed to a new climate or a new condition. But they, 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 they ain't got it yet. They ain't got it yet. Because, see, you know, you know the difference between weather and climate is, right? See, weather do not control climate. Tell me this right here. Climate controls weather. What weather does is weather tells you about what kind of climate you are in. But the climate is the one that controls the weather. When you got saved, what happened is you no longer sin no longer controlled you, but your position began to control it. As a matter of fact, when you got saved, the one who saved you is the one who controls you, and the one who controls you has already controlled sin. You you must be able to be acclimated. You must be able to allow yourself to understand you are now in a new climate. Well, maybe that, did, maybe that didn't work on that one. Maybe, maybe this one will work. So you have to be acclimated and adapted yes. to your position well, called saint. Yes. See, because, see, as a saint, you're actually victorious. As a sinner, you're, you're literally um, defeated. But, but you must be acclimated and adapted. And so not only to acclim- acclimate means to become accustomed to a new climate and or a new condition. Yeah. Check out this, y'all. Y'all ready for this one? Yeah. To adapt means it is to make suitable for a new use or purpose. Yes, Lord. Thank you. working hard on me, man. I'm just, I'm just sweating big time. See, you're acclimated and adapted. So not only are you uh, accustomed to this new climate and new condition, but you're also make, be, being made, not you are, not you, you are being made suitable for a new use or purpose. When you got set in, Jesus, in Christ, thank you, honey. When you got set, because look, I, I want to show you because I'm not making this up. Look at verse five. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So he said that you became acclimated and adapted to your new position in Christ. Because before you got saved, you were not in Christ. So before you got saved, you cannot call on Christ. Before you got saved, you cannot handle the sin in your life. But now you are, you are not in a new position called being a saint. And so therefore, you have become accustomed to this new climate, yes. this new climate called victory. Yeah, all missed it right there. See, see, see we, we're so used to walking in this climate called defeat. We're so used to walking in this climate called sin that we don't realize that we've been, we've been conveyed, translated, transferred to this new position. And because we've been transferred to this new position, we are now made suitable for this new use For all purpose, because now the new use is not for you. The new use is for him. And so he made you suitable for his purpose while he made you accustomed to this new climate that you are now in. So when he says you are in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, he's saying that you are now acclimated and adapted to your new position. In other words, you don't have to look at the old stuff no more. You don't have to allow that old sin in your life to continue to control you. You don't have to allow that way of thinking in your life to dominate you no more. Because it says that, that, that uh, let this mind be in 
me that is also in Christ Jesus. So, so you don't even have, have to let your way of thinking dominate you anymore because now you can let his way of thinking dominate you. That's why I know we don't really understand our position. Because we allow our old, our old thinking. What we used to call, we used to call the stinking thinking. We allow our stinking thinking to still dominate. Let me see if I can make this a little bit more plain. Um, see, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I'm not a real good, I'm not a real good, I don't clean house real good, right? Now my sister, you know, Minister Gloria, you know, she, she, she's a fanatic when it comes to cleaning house. And so she get in the bathroom, y'all, and she'll just, she'll tear the bathroom, just tear it down. <laughs> and so, and to the point where it make you almost not want to even go in the bathroom because it's so clean. And, and here's what happens when you go in the bathroom and, and, and she got stuff set in a certain place. You better make sure it's in that same place when you get out. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Y'all follow me. Follow me here. <laughs> when we get saved, there is a cleaning out that happens. And there is an expectation of the Father when he cleans us out. Not for us to move the stuff and put it in other places. He's already moved it out the way. He's already cleaned it out. He's already sanitized it. He's already set it apart. And all we have to do is walk in what he has already done for you and I. That's how I know we don't know our position. Include me sometimes. Because, yep, yep, yep. Guess what, uh, uh, but, uh, but, Brother Cole? I go back to the old way sometimes. I mean, cause, because, because I, I battle against flesh and blood. When I should be battling against spirit. But understanding if we, if we, we must attain, we must be acclimated and adapted to our new position. Y'all, your new position is one of victory. Your new position is one of glory. Your new position is one of daylight and not nighttime. Your new position is one of surrender and not simple struggle. But see, he had to go away for all this to happen. So, not only I, I got to, I might not get out this point, y'all. Let me see if I can make, can I, can I make it just a little bit more plain for y'all? Just a little bit more? There, there's a book in the Old Testament it's called Zechariah. I need y'all to go to Zechariah real quickly. It just let me take my time for a minute. I need to go to the book of Zechariah, the third chapter. Because I believe Zechariah, the third chapter, really explains it so well for us. Zechariah is in the Old Testament. If you get to Malachi, go back one book. And in the third chapter of Zechariah, I need, you to, I need you to see this real quickly. And we might get to this next point. But in Zechariah, the third chapter, Joshua the high priest. Joshua the high priest, listen to what it says in chapter 3, verse 1. He says, he says, Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand I plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments, and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who were stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, Joshua, see, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. 
I will clothe you with rich robe. And then verse 5 says, and then, I, then I said, Zechariah, let them put a clean turban on his head. So, that, so they put a clean turban on his head and they put the clothes on him, clean clothes, and the angel of the Lord stood by. Now, why, 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 why did I actually go to that to, to, real quick? I'm glad you asked that question. because Here's why. Because when we got saved, we were just like Joshua. But I want you to see something here in the book of Zechariah. He says, then he showed me Joshua, the angel showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. First of all, the angel of the Lord at that point in time was Christ in the Old Testament. Uh -huh. Capital A, capital L. The, the angel of the Lord was Christ, it was Christ being, being presented in the Old Testament. Right. But, 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 but now look here, now keep your Bibles open. He says, Joshua stood before the angel of the Lord. Yeah. In other words, Joshua stood in the presence of of Christ. Don't y'all miss this right here. Joshua stood in the presence of Christ. And then look what happened. It says, and then Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Satan standing at Joshua's right hand to oppose him while Joshua was standing with Christ. Don't miss this now. Just because you saved don't mean Satan gonna give up on you. Just because you saved and you are in the presence of Christ don't mean Satan going to stop trying to come at you. Just because you saved don't mean that all the hell in your life is going to simply stop. Not going to happen. Y'all get that point right there? Okay, now let's keep, let's keep reading though. So then he says, and the Lord. See? And the Lord said yeah. to Satan. Uh -huh. See, Jesus didn't say to Satan. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Joshua uh -huh. didn't say. Uh -huh. Speak to Satan. Uh -huh. The Lord. Yes. Yahweh. Yes. God. Yes. He spoke to Satan. Yes. And look what he said right here. He says, the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Yes. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not, in other words, he rebuked him not once, but twice. But here's the good part, because Satan stood in the midst, but Satan had his mouth closed while he stood in the midst. Because he was rebuked to do anything while in the midst. You are in the midst of Christ every day you walk. And so Satan stands, or his demon stands, at your side, ready to oppose you at any given time, but because you are in a new position, because you are in the saint position, because you are in the position of Christ, because you are in a new position, all he can do is stand at his side. And all you got to do is call on your daddy from heaven. Call on your daddy and say, Daddy, I need a little help down here. And then all he's going to do is say, The Lord rebuke you. See, we put too much, we put too much uh, uh, effort and energy into trying to rebuke, say, y'all know, nah, nah, I'm, I'm, I got I to gotta, I gotta say this. See, I, I grew up in the church where they, where they thought that, you know, um, Deacon Jackie, the louder you called, you know, I rebuke you saying, the louder you called it, the more stronger it was. You know, and, and then the more you started doing all the theatrics, the more he won't get off of you. No. All, the Lord, all it says is the Lord says, the Lord rebuke you. Uh -huh. the, Lord. the Lord rebuke you. Yeah. And then he says, Joshua, was, was, he was clothed with filthy garments. Uh -huh. And then he said, the Lord said, take them garments off. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And because he took the garments off, he says, now I got some new garments for you. Don't y'all know that God has some new garments for you? Yes. When you got saved, he put those new garments on you. When you got saved, he put you in the presence of Christ. When you got saved, you, you were, the, the Holy Spirit was dispatched to your side. When you got saved, all you have to do is stay in the presence of God and let God fight the battle that he wants to fight for you. When you get saved, because you are in, you are in a new position, so you must become acclimated and adapted to the new position. Understand? You don't have to fight for yourself now. You don't have to fight the sin. You, you allow God to fight the sin in you. You're, you're fighting from a position of authority. Yes, God. Yes, God. 
That's why you must be acclimated and adapted to this position, this new position. Because Christ, he transferred you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. I spent too much time on that point. But that's all right. I want you to understand something. And, and, and this is, if you don't get anything else from today, understand that the position you are in, the victorious position you are in, is where God placed you. You walk in defeat. Not because you've been defeated, but because you decided to choose defeat over victory. Your new position causes you to walk in deliverance and away from defeat. It causes you to walk in daylight away from darkness. It causes you to walk with your Savior away from sin. Your new position. You must be acclimated and adapted to your position. If you are saved, you are a saint. If you are saved, you are a saint who grapples with sin. If you are saved, you are a saint who still struggles. If you are saved, you are a saint that still has to fight every time, you, when, as soon as you get up from the, in the daytime. If you are saved, you are, a, you are still a saint. But you're not perfect. But you do serve one who is perfect. I promise you I'll get to my next few points next week. But I want you to understand, I, I, I can't stress it enough. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a series of messages eventually on, on the word. Well, Paul tells Timothy to preach the word. Because I'm convinced that when we truly understand the word of God, we will be able to deal with anything in our life and deal with it from a place of victory and not a place of defeat.